Thanks for joining us, everybody, for our webinar. We're just going to give it just a couple of moments just so we can allow um, a little bit more time for everyone to jump on in. Uh, but we do thank you for joining us today and um, looking forward to sharing our amazing adventures for our Adenoda um, Ventures on the Great Barrier Reef with you. So looks like we've got quite a few people coming in still, so we'll just give it just a few more moments. We might start the ball rolling anyway, um, but firstly, just want to introduce everyone. So thanks once again. I am Ramona Cuda. I'm the sales executive for Coral Expeditions. And then joining us today, we actually have um, some of our, our management team as well. So we do have Jeff Gillies, who is our commercial director, joining us today. So thank you, Jeff. <laughs> we also have Liz Soares, who is our national sales distribution manager. So thank you, Liz. And then, of course, we have Marisha. So Marisha is one of our expedition leaders on board um, and also a master reef guide. So we've got the pleasure of her joining us today and talking us through the Great Barrier Reef. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Yeah, thanks, Marisha. Um, so if anyone does have any questions, etc., cetera, um, you can submit those via the question and answer box, um, and then we'll get to those at the end for you. Um, if we don't have time to address every question, and we'll go back to you individually with those anyway. So we'll have those as a report for you. Um, feel free to ask those questions away. Um, so thanks for joining, as I said, and I'm actually going to hand you over to Jeff. Thanks so much for that Ramona. And uh, yeah, thank you to everybody for, for joining us today and uh, giving up your time. Um, hopefully wherever you are in the country, you get uh, a little bit of knowledge out of today and also some, some inspiration once Mauricia starts to talk about the, uh, the, the Great Barrier Reef expeditions coming up. Um, so I thought I'd just, um, yeah, just spend a couple of minutes setting the scene. So it's a yeah, very exciting time this week for Coral Expeditions, where many of you will know, um, restarting our, our operations next Wednesday, um, the 14th, which is almost uh, exactly six months since, um, since we brought all of the vessels home and, and laid up in Cairns. So like most of the travel industry, it's been a tumultuous uh, six months, but yeah, a huge amount of uh, excitement, um, some nervous energy and anticipation for the team to be, um, you know, to be back to operations. Um, but um, look, it is a, it's a very cautious market out there. So we've, we've been selling these reef trips now for the last, um, last sort of six to eight weeks. And I'm sure that everybody here is experiencing it. So there's lots of, lots of uh, feedback coming in that, you know, people are keen to get back to travel, but they're also very cautious about what that means. Um, so just, just by way of, I guess setting the scene and, and letting you know what um, you know what we've been doing and and how coral expeditions um, can be approachable for for your guests is is a, a quick reminder. So really, you know, our the DNA of our company is and always has been small ship Australian expeditions. So um, you know that by the very nature of it is is very approachable and, and does suit the you know suit the the environment that we're in. So. Um, on all of our vessels, whether it's the Coral Discoverer with under, under 72 passengers or um, when we get the larger vessels, they'll have under, under 100 passengers. Um, you know, we, we have an Australian, fully Australian crew uh, and a fully Australian guest base. Uh, so again, when we restart the reef, all of our crew are based here in Cairns. It's an area with, with absolutely no community transmission um, and uh, hasn't been for some time. So it's a uh, a really, really safe proposition on, on that sense. Um, places that we visit are remote nature-based destinations and Mauricia will run through some, some of those. So, you know, think the far reaches and far corners of the world, isolated sand caves and, and reef systems, no, no real population interaction. Um, so it's a, it's a sanctuary and it's, a, it's an escape, um, you know, for the people to be able to, to get out there. Um, so those things in mind, we've also spent a lot of time developing our sail safe plan. And I'll just give you a very quick, um, you know, run through of the, of the plan. Um, you know, it concentrates on two key facets. The first is that, um, you know, prevention, which is where we spend the most of our energy, um, you know, successfully preventing any, any issues or instances getting on board um, is critical. And there's not a, a single travel or, or business that we've seen in Australia that will take 
a, a, a more rigorous approach to, um, you know, to the way that we do go through this pre-screening process. So um, all, all of the guests and all of the crew um, will do some pre-screening uh, medical history. Um, we will also have a general GP visit uh, to identify any underlying health issues um, within a period of 72 hours to, to ideally 60 hours before travel. Everybody will take a PCR um, swab test, which is a, a very highly reliable um, test, um, and that will be guests and crew. Uh, and then in those final days before travel, we do and just recommend heightened hygiene and avoid crowded places. So, so you know, really it's about getting a, a safe community on board. Um, then once we get on board, uh, you won't see too many fundamental changes to the product. It's as I said, it's always been, the ships have always been spacious. There's never been a crowding issue. We've always had small numbers. Um, what you will see is, um, you know, social distancing in and around any areas like the lecture lounge and dining periods. Um, you'll see a lot more hand wash stations and sanitization. Uh, we do have a doctor on board. Um, and, you know, we've also got um, yeah, facets of, of the food and beverage service, such as uh, removal of, of the breakfast and lunch buffets, more to a plated style. And we've always done the a la carte dinners. So um, you'll see some, some tweaks on board, which are really about mitigation and management, um, but all in all, uh, a very similar travel experience to what we have always offered. So, um, you know, yeah, we just want, wanted you to, to kick off today by, I guess, understanding a little bit about the scene and, you know, how we're approaching it, knowing that the market is, is particularly cautious. And um, I will now and over to the team to talk about more exciting things. Um, Ramona's just put up there, if, you, if you're ever looking for the latest updates on um, what we're doing with SailSafe or borders that are open or, or anything um, related to our travel advice on the main screen of our website, there is a top left COVID button there, which is updated daily as well. Thanks, Ramona. Thank you, Jeff. So I'm sure that um, everyone is equally as excited as Marisha to be um, restarting. Um, so we're actually, our first expedition is going to be our outer known adventures on the Great Barrier Reef. So that will be commencing on the 14th of October. Um, and it's actually quite fitting the fact that, you know, 35 odd years ago when coral expeditions did start, um, it's, its main trip and its first trips were out on the Great Barrier Reef. So it's a little bit, um, I guess, ironic in a way that um, that's where we'll be restarting. So uh, without any further ado, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about the, uh, the, the dates, et cetera, itself, and then I will hand you over to Marisha as well to sort of go through a bit more of the actual um, highlights and things. Um, but our outer known adventures in the Great Barrier Reef, we will be running this year from October through to December. There will be a seven night expedition from Cairns to Cairns. Um, and then we will have one outer reef expedition on the 10th of July next year. Um, and then we will also have a couple of our uh, themed expeditions. So um, I'm not going to go over those today because you probably won't have too much time, but you can learn more about those on the website. Um, so they'll be our Revitalise on the Reef. Um, and we also have a photographer's expedition for 2020, uh, which we'll be running as well. So, um, so two fantastic trips. Um, so there is so many highlights that we could cover today. Um, you know, with our outer known adventures of the outer Great Barrier Reef, we'll do a combination of uh, expeditioning. So some will be water-based and then we've got some which will be land-based. Um, so you've got a great mix of um, cultural interactions. You've got your Indigenous experience and then not to mention your fantastic reef locations that we do go to as well. Um, but our lovely Marisha is actually going to talk you through some of her top five or six locations um, and then give you a bit more of an insight into those. Thank you. Uh, so uh, as Ramona introduced me already, my name is Marisha and I'm an expedition leader for Coral Expeditions, uh, which I've been doing for the last two and a half years. So I think I've actually gotten the best gig because I haven't had to deal with this logistical nightmare of COVID. I just get to come back and do all of the fun stuff, like um, take all of our guests hiking um, on the various islands that we visit, and also I'll be doing lots of snorkeling with them and water activities. Uh, so I guess uh, the five locations that I'm most uh, excited to get back into is definitely Osprey Reef, which will have to be uh, number one. 
if you bump into any diver um, in Australia or even just in Cairns, uh, they always mention that Osprey Reef is a must, a must see reef system. I've also um, always loved going to the ribbon reefs, especially ribbon reef number nine and number three. Uh, Lizard Island's my favourites, just because of the, remote, the remoteness of the islands. Uh, as Jeff did mention as well, you're probably safer from COVID being on our trips than you are being on the mainland Australia. So when you're standing on Lizard Island, um, it, you just feel like you're on an island in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and Fitzroy Island's definitely one of my favourites too. Uh, so Lizard Island, here you can see a picture that we just took not long ago. Lizard Island, uh, we visit on day two of our trip and it's the northernmost uh, continental island that we visited, that we visit. So as I did mention, um, it is quite remote. There you can see it in the um, top left of the screen. Uh, the biggest one is actually uh, Lizard Island. And when we're there, there's just so much that uh, we offer and that we do. So we do a hike up to the highest peak. It's quite a hard, a strenuous hike, but it's definitely worth it when you get to the top because you've got 360 degree views from the islands. Uh, we also get to go snorkeling in uh, Watson's Bay, which is just that bay that you can see on the bottom left there. And that is well known for its giant clam garden. So every time we have the snorkelers uh, come back, they're always amazed by just these huge clams that they see, which are about one and a half meters long. Um, so that's always definitely a highlight of the trip. So just some more shots here. Uh, we do have the luxury of uh, anchoring at Lizard Island overnight, which means that we can uh, transport the guests onto the island. We find a beautiful um, west facing uh, beach and we get to have sunset drinks and uh, watch the sun go down before we go back on board the ship for dinner. Um, you can also see the little green sea turtle. So that was actually taken right on shore, offshore from the island. Um, I was standing on the sand and this little turtle was just coming up really close and just nibbling on some uh, seaweed. So there's plenty of uh, turtles that come up and they're not too afraid of people. And we also uh, get our people into diving as well if they're interested. So because the island, uh, you can just walk straight off land into the water, it's nice and shallow and this just helps people uh, get into the diving and they can see if it's something that they'd be interested in doing. And it looks like um, one of the easiest spots to actually do diving as a first timer as well because it is quite shallow. Yeah, that's it. We're sure as well, they do fish feeding of a night time. Now while we're yeah. overnight on board, so what can we expect to see at, at that kind of thing? Yeah, that's right. So uh, because the island is, uh, there's nothing else nearby, um, what that means is that a lot of big fish uh, will come and use the island as refuge. And also it's almost like its own personal works. So they come and try to snap up an easy feed. Um, because we're anchored at night, we will uh, put the back lights on throw some food in and usually the fish uh, are already waiting before we even do that. So we do tend to see some quite large uh, tawny reef sharks. So these are carpet shark. Uh, one of them gets up to two meters and the famous uh, Queensland broker comes up as well. So that one weighs a ginormous 200 kilos and you get to see that come, come really close to the back of the ship. That's awesome. Probably quite hungry too, given that we haven't been there for some time. Yeah, that's right. So we haven't been there since March now, so I'm sure they'll be starving. Yep. And then, oh, the Osprey Reef. So uh, for those of you who are unaware about uh, Osprey Reef, it's actually got quite amazing geology. So it's about 300 uh, kilometres northeast of Cairns, so it's quite far away. And it's really on the edge of that uh, continental slope. So it's, a, it's on top of a 2000 meter um, island, which means that you have this amazing reef system and just right off the reef system, it can drop down to two kilometers. So it's quite amazing. Uh, and as I mentioned as well, this is a favorite amongst divers because uh, just the marine life that come around is spectacular. So you've got your manta rays, 
There's also well-known areas uh, where there's large amounts of reef sharks. Um, you can also see there, the, we've got the potato cod groper. Uh, so there are large schools of those ones too. So there's just so much to see there. And even on a good day, on a really good day, you get visibility of about 60 metres. And a poor day, it can be up to 30 metres, which is still quite amazing. So there's lots to do, lots to see on that reef. I guess it's a perfect time for us to be going there as well because, I mean, not only are we restarting, but I think nature's kind of restarting as well, I guess. So, you know, it's that, that new life cycle of the marine life. Yeah. So this is actually my favourite time to be on the reef because everything's warming up um, and all of the animals are getting quite excited. So you do get to see um, a lot of turtles, especially turtles will start mating um, and then they go up onto the beaches to lay their eggs and a lot of, a lot of fish um, are getting excited too. So we also have the uh, coral spawning. So we're expecting to see coral spawning happen um, sometime at the end of October or start of November. They're not too sure about the dates yet, but that's always an exciting time because it only happens the one night of the year um, on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, and then we have our beautiful ribbon reef. So, this is definitely one of my highlights as well. Um, the ribbon reefs will start um, heading to, and they're south from Osprey. So Osprey is our northernmost destination. And these ribbon reefs are uh, reef systems that are the furthest east from the mainland that you can possibly get to. So often they will mark the barrier between um, the lagoon and also the edge of Australia's continental shelf. Um, which this is good news for us because what it means is that there's lots of fresh water coming in, there's strong currents and along with it, it brings lots of schools of fish and um, wildlife as well. And often we find the furthest east that you go from the mainland, the better and healthier the reef systems are. So here you can see um, when we do our reef stops, we do actually have something for everyone. So if, um, for those people that are really avid swimmers, snorkelers or um, divers will love the trip and also for those that would like to remain dry for most of the trip because we have this beautiful glass bottom boat which means that you can actually see what's underneath uh, what's below the surface just from the boat and quite often um, I'll be on there as well and I'll be doing a little bit of an interp about uh, what the passengers are seeing. Some nice photos there as well so um, that's a probably an iconic species of the reef that you can see there, that top left, that's the Mary Rass. And the ribbon reefs just are loaded with these uh, beautiful rass. So we get to see them quite often as well. Lots of clownfish, that's a favorite amongst many. A bonus that we have as well, as you would have seen those um, glass bottom boats um, in the, the previous picture, but we do also have those in tandem with our explorer tenders, which we'll touch on a bit later, but that allows us, like you can see how close those guys are to the reef they're snorkeling. Um, so yeah. that flexibility of those vessels actually allow us to get our guests nice and close to those reef systems. Um, so we've just got that little bit more flexibility as to where we can go on the reef. So nice little bonus. Yeah, and the best thing about it too is um, whether you love snorkeling, I mean, if you love snorkeling, you can um, always snorkel a section, come back on board, go on the glass bottom boat, and with the luxury of the boat, we can drive you to another portion of the reef that you can't get to um, just by snorkeling to, and we can explore that too. So it's not just for people that don't want to go into the water. Um, we run these glass bottom boats throughout um, the reef stops. So you get plenty of time to go in the water um, and explore it by the surface as well. And Fitzroy Island. So Fitzroy Island's quite close uh, to Cairns. I think it's only a 45 minute boat ride. But uh, when we're here, we get to anchor right in front of the island, we transport uh, the passengers onto the island and we have many activities uh, to do there as well. So it can be anything from, um, oh yeah, there, we've got the Turtle Rehab Centre. So that's uh, Jenny Gilberts and she started uh, the Turtle Rehab Centre. So usually she'll wait for um, us to come by before she starts feeding the turtles. And while she's doing like a little feeding um, display, she'll also tell us a little bit about uh, all the great work that they do there. 
I think my favorite thing to see there is just how she interacts with these turtles. They recognize her just from her voice. They'll come and swim up to her and usually they will ask to be patted. And when they're being patted, they will have their little tails wagging. The most cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, um, I used to volunteer there for a couple of um, couple of years and I remember Jenny saying that it's actually quite amazing because they do recognize people. So they're such intelligent creatures and their shell is actually made of um, like a, a melanin yep. type. Yeah. And so that when you're scratching them, they actually do feel that sensitivity. So they kind of respond a little bit like dogs. They're, um, they're quite, quite amazing creatures. So definitely worth learning about those guys. So when we're at the island, you can see um, just on the bottom, bottom left on the beach there, uh, we'll anchor the ship right in front and then usually we'll transport the guests onto the island. And when they're there, they, they have so many options um, of what they want to do uh, throughout the morning. So usually I will take a group of the avid keen hikers and we'll go up um, to the summits. So it's quite a hard walk, but once again, it's very, um, very worthwhile when you get up to the top. And then um, we'll take a different route to get back down to the bottom. And usually it's through this lush um, tropical rainforest. There's also two other walks, uh, which uh, one's moderate and then one's a bit easier. So there's something for everyone. So one of the other walks takes you through what's called the secret garden. So it's another rainforest walk. Um, with many spots to stop along the way with signs telling you a little bit about um, the rainforest. And then there's also another walk that takes you to Nudie Beach, which is, I think in 2018, was voted um, Australia's number one beach. Um, after Fitzroy Island, we'll uh, take the passengers over to this beautiful cave. Almost looks like a big uh, giant um, sand ray. Uh, and we will transport them onto the islands and here they will get to go off the, off the island onto um, or into the reef, go for a snorkel. Usually we'll have some nibblies and food provided as well. Um, and we'll do glass bottom boat tours around, around them. So these islands, they're quite um, magical because it's just this little secluded uh, sand cay in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so it's quite special. And uh, the passengers like it too because it's a bit more of a... Um, relaxed, easy going swim because they can just walk off off the cay into the water. And the sunsets there are absolutely beautiful because it's quite close to Australia's uh, mainland, so, or the mainland Australia. So you get to see the sun setting behind uh, all the beautiful mountains and cairns. And of course, uh, we visit the Daintree uh, rainforest, which many people don't know, but it's actually the oldest rainforest in the world. I think it's about 180 million years old, so it's quite special. Um, we'll get to take them for a cruise along the river and uh, we'll pick up a local guide who's quite familiar with the area and knows a lot about the rainforest. We'll bring him on board our boat and he'll take us around and tell us a little bit about what we're seeing. And we also get to go for a little cross Yeah, it's exciting, but it's so you probably heard me mention before about one of our um, photography themed expeditions. So this just gives you a little bit more info about um, that particular expedition. So it's going to be on the 18th of November. So, I mean, you can see all those amazing highlights that Marisha just went over. Um, they will be um, just sort of part of the, the joy that people can get to experience on board. Um, so it'll be the 18th of November. Um, for that particular departure. And there'll be two photographers, um, Jasmine Carey and uh, Darren Ju, and they will actually be hosting as um, guest photographers on board. So they'll have the opportunity to do workshops um, on board, learn a little bit about, you know, how to take the ideal photo, um, and then sort of just get the most out of their experience. So um, just keep that one in mind. Um, I mean, it'd be great if that particular date was the coral sporting date, you never know. <laughs> Um, thanks, Marisha, for you know giving us a, a huge rundown of all of your favourite locations and things like that. Um, so, as you were saying, you know, our our guest experience on shore is not just about the snorkeling experience. Um, it's also about you know those beautiful, um, pristine locations that we go to. We've got your kayaking, you've got your Daintree heritage. So, there's really something for everybody. 
Um, typically, we would have sunset drinks and barbecues. However, given today's current climate, uh, we're not doing the communal barbecue, but we'll still absolutely do those sunset drinks. Um, just with the, the current COVID restrictions, those barbecues have been uh, suspended uh, for now. So. Um, so these are our expedition vessels that we use. So the vessels, the Coral Discoverer, that we'll be out on the reef with. Um, so with that one, we've got the beauty where our coral expeditions explorer tenders are actually purpose built. Um, so they will actually um, be lowered down from this hydraulic platform um, that you can see just there in the water. And then guests are able to easily walk on and off those um, from the back of the vessel. Um, so that's one of our unique features. Um, wouldn't you agree, Marisha, that they're a fantastic um, yeah, on board? Definitely. We've got so many good toys um, on board that makes the operation really easy. So as you can see, um, the platform is especially handy for if we're um, lowering divers into the water. It's just easier because that means they can just sit on the platform, we can put the heavy gear on um, and they can go straight in. And the same as we can just lift them up out of the water. And the explorers can just get really nice and close to so many spots too. Great, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and there is also a marine toilet on back of, on the, the explorers as well. Um, so you're not having to sort of go backwards and forwards to the vessels. Um, and then we do also have the, the commentary on board. So uh, we've got that guided commentary throughout all of our expeditions as well. So don't want to miss anything Marisha Scott to, to share with us and learn. And then what's the pencil you ask? A really relaxed um, atmosphere on board. So um, We've got that um, five-star train of service, I guess. We don't, we don't flag ourselves as a luxury vessel. However, we do pride ourselves on the service that we do have. Um, so our crew love to you know, just have everyone up on board for a sunset drink, or we've got multiple bars around the areas that we can go to. Um, everything is chef prepared as well on board. So we will have all meals included while on board. Um, and we do also have with our lunch and dinner service, we do have um, beers, wines, and then house spirits as well that we do include with those. Uh, and then there is also the option of our, um, our new onboard wine packages, which they can purchase as an additional extra. Um, so there's two packages with those um, and they just need to be pre-purchased prior. Um, or um, if you've got any questions though, um, I can absolutely send you more info on those or you can see those wine packages on the website. Another thing that we do have, which um, our guests absolutely love, is our open bridge. Um, so it's, it's something that's quite unique. Um, our guests love nothing more than to come up into the bridge and, you know, see where we're going, chart the course, etc. cetera. Um, especially sort of, you know, if it's during a, a whale migration or, um, you know, at night time, it's a perfect place to, to have that view um, and see where we're going. And then not to mention our fantastic um, lecture room. So, that's where we always have our expedition leaders. So whether it be Marisha or, um, or Jamie, who's one of our other team that will be on board for our first expedition. Um, so they'll actually be in there to um, give interpretive lectures throughout the cruise as well, which are always included. So we'll actually be using our Coral Discoverer for our Great Barrier Reef. Um, so traditionally she would have 72 passengers maximum, but we have capped that at 70. Um, and then on that on board that one, we've just got the 36 staterooms. So a combination of bridge deck, promenade and main deck category staterooms. Um, so she was built just uh, back in 2005 and then refurbished in 2016. So she's still looking very lovely and fresh um, and has that really nice warm um, sort of coastal feel to her. Um, she's designed sort of for maximum views. So all of them, areas you'll have those beautiful views when you're in the dining room um, and then even our bridge deck lounge has those beautiful views so we've kept that in mind so we can always keep the outside in. So you've got top left corner we have our bridge deck balcony stateroom and then you'll see bridge deck um, sorry our bridge deck stateroom we have six of those. Um, our promenade deck category A is up in that top right corner and they will have your picture windows and then your main deck category A and your B will have those portal windows. So there are leading categories, those ones. 
So that's sort of a bit of a, a wrap of the, the vessels. Um, you can get more um, fact sheets and also more information on the vessel specifications on our website. So feel free to um, jump in and get more of that info. I know we're a bit cognizant of time for everybody, so I don't want to go into too much detail on those for you. Um, but always keep in mind, we do have some um, great current market offers. Um, so on our website, you'll find all of those. You'll see there's a little special offers tab at the top right corner, uh, which you can see. Or also um, down at the very bottom of our web page, you'll see there's a special offers tab and also a trade resources tab. Um, so you'll be able to access all of those there. Um, so when you're on that special offers page, you'll see that these particular offers, we currently have in market for our 2020 Great Barrier Reef Expeditions. Um, so we've got a 500 per person travel credit and um, plus one pre-night accommodation for our 2020. So now is a great time to um, have anybody that's you know, keen to, to travel at this time um, to get on board for that fantastic saving. Um, and we're also offering a flexible deposit period of 30 days as well as um, no solo supplement um, subject to availability on our Great Barrier Reef 2020 as well. Um, if it's on our 2021 departures though, they can still take advantage of the complimentary deposit protection or our 30 day flexible deposit option as well. Um, and then all year round, we do offer 10% adjoining savings. So there's always that fantastic saving. So in our trade resources area, you'll be able to access a recorded version of this webinar later. We will pop a, a copy of there in for you, um, as well as great resources such as social media tiles. We'll have all of our e-brochures in there as well. Um, so we are moving away from printed brochures and you'll find that majority of our collateral now will be an electronic version um, and you can access those resources in there. Um, but if you do have anything that you can't find, feel, please feel free to reach out and we can happily assist you with those ones. So thanks for joining us guys. Um, I'm sure there's probably a couple of questions there and I do appreciate everyone's time. Um, hopefully you've gained a great insight from Marisha there. So thanks Marisha for your expertise. Yeah, thanks Ramona and thanks Marisha. Um, we do actually have a number of questions that have come through and I just thought it might be the opportunity that while well, we're both, both here. Um, so one of the first questions we had is, will we be reducing the number of passengers on board due to our um, distancing? Rona, would you be able to answer that one for us? Or Jeff? Um, yeah, I do. I, I typed um, in an answer to that one. So um, the ships are very spacious as they are and um, meet all of the sort of like passenger to floor space ratios. Um, Coral uh, Discoverer doing the reef um, has no reduction in capacity. Um, Coral Adventurer and Coral Geographer, when they get um, back to operations or start operations, will be limiting to um, to under 100 um, and that's um, you know that's more more a um, you know a sort of a confidence for guests uh, thing uh, and also that determination of 100 is the current uh, federal restriction on allowing vessels to, to operate in this environment. Oh, great thank you Jeff. Um, the next question we had was from Rita so, so we can share it across from all that um, attended. Um, she was actually asking in regards to the equipment supplied um, in regards to diving or snorkeling. Um, do we provide the equipment or do the passengers actually bring their own? Marisha, you'll probably be the best to answer this one. Yeah. Um, so we do say if you have uh, your own equipment that you love, um, by all means bring it. But Coral Expeditions does supply everything. So we'll, um, our crew will fit you for the um, face mask. I mean, not face mask, sorry. Um, yeah, mask and also you'll get a snorkel and you'll be fitted with fins and they'll be yours to uh, for the remainder of the trip. Great, thank uh, you. For the dive gear, sorry, the dive gear as well. Um, all that is supplied by us. Um, our crew will fit you so you don't have to worry about any of that. Actually, Marisha, it might be an opportunity to explain how we do a an introductory dive for those that haven't dived before if they're wanting to. How does it actually work? Uh, so you don't have to have a, a diving certificate to come diving with us. Uh, but what that does mean, if you don't have one, then one of our crew will take you for a complimentary um, practice dive. And they will just go through a few, a few things with you, like how to um, clear your equipment from water or anything like that. Once you pass the two or three tests, uh, then we can take you for a dive. So as I mentioned, that's complimentary. It's also... Um, good because that means that the 
a person that's thinking about diving can check out the equipment. They'll be submerged under the water. They get an experience of what it will feel like and then they can go from there and decide if they want to proceed with a dive. Yeah, and so should they proceed um, with the, the dive post that and they want to do either a full introductory dive or a certified dive, then they can do those as an optional extra. Exactly. Include our snorkeling equipment though is complimentary, however. Great, thank you for that. Um, and then the next question we had was from Jan. Will there be actually stingers in the water in that area? Uh, so the stinger, sorry. Oh, sorry. So the stinger season is yeah from about November to March, April. Um, we can't say for certain if there will be or there won't be because they're quite small and jellyfish, as we know, they're transparent in the water. Uh, but we do recommend during the stinger season that they do wear stinger suits. Uh, we do have stinger suits uh, on board that can be uh, purchased. Great, thank you. Um, Ramona, this is a question for you. Um, are beverages included in um, our cruises on the reef? Uh, beverages? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So during lunch and dinner service, they will include the, the beers, the wines and the house spirits. Um, on our previous Great Barrier Reef, for those that might be familiar with our three, four night that we used to run, um, that was something that wasn't included. However, with our brand new expedition on our Coral Discoverer, uh, we do include those now. Awesome. We do, of course, um, encourage people that if they are going to be consuming alcohol at lunchtime, of course, you know, bear in mind water sports and alcohol don't mix. So. <laughs> So one of the questions we actually had um, also from Ruth was in regards to um, our onshore activities. Uh, she heard the word hard hikes. Um, what do we actually mean? What's the average age group on our trips? Just so we can have some clarity. Average so guess. age. Go, Ramona. Oh, either or. We probably got both um, of the feedback on this. So, I mean, our, our trips do vary. I mean, our, our Great Barrier Reef, it varies from... Um, you know, teenagers um, through to, you know, 80s, 85s even. Um, it just depends on the comfort level. So we don't specifically say that um, age is a factor. It's basically more about your mobility. So we do have a, a pretty large mix of a, an audience on board. So Yes, and we have got some um, children rates available as well now, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but another question we had was, can everyone disembark at one time and do we have kayaks on board or only on land? So kayaks are inclusive on board, um, so they can use those at certain locations. Um, it's a great place to get those out. Um, and in terms of disembarking, with our explorer tenders that I explained for you, um, hydraulically lowered, um, all of our guests can actually board that one tender at one time, um, and then they can all disembark at the same time. Nice and easy. Um, and then the, one of the other questions we had is um, in regards to groups. Um, do we actually have groups, um, bookings available for? So I can actually add to this one. Yes, we do have groups and we do have the opportunity for FOC um, tour escorts. But probably the best opportunity um, thing to do is if you could get in contact with us and we'll be able to check the availability and go and run through the, um, the opportunities that we have. But yes, we certainly are doing groups on these particular um, departure dates as well. And then, then the last question that we actually had was um, on this webinar with the shore excursions, um, what are the actual shore excursions on this particular out of known program? So Marisha actually covered most of the shore excursion locations that we do go to. So Osprey Reef, Ribbon Reef, Lizard Island, Fitzroy Island, the Daintree, Cook, Cook Town, so we will get the opportunity to go to the museum and um, the botanical garden and see some of the indigenous culture. So the full itinerary is available actually on the website. Uh, being expedition, um, we can do it uh, at the day by day itineraries can uh, vary just being you know, whether it's weather dependent, etc. So, um, as I said, uh, they are all available on the website as well. Just on just look up uh, cruises and destinations and look up for the Artinone Reef, and uh, we'll be able that'll have all the answers for the different locations that we will be going to. Is there, I think uh, Peter had asked that question in, in Cooktown, he subsequently asked. Um, so we do do, do a, a really nice morning visit into Cooktown, very historic um, old town. And we, we um, sort of walk the main street and the shorelines um, with the guides. We also, there's a small lookout there. Um, there's a Cooktown museum and a lovely botanical garden. So um, yeah, it's a nice, uh, really, really nice morning in a, in a very quaint historical little town. It is, it's also 250 years this year since Cook arrived. Down. So they're all very excited about that. 
Very good. Liz, there was a couple of other questions that oh, have yes, they've popped up. Sorry. Open. So I'll, I can run through. Uh, one question was Do guests need to wear face masks? Good question. Our pre screening um, and the level of pre screening means that no, it's not, it's not mandatory. We'll supply all of the guests with face masks. There'll be plenty of social distancing on board. But once we're on board, that screening basically has us uh, classified as, as a family bubble. Um, so, you know, it's up to, up to guests. If there were to be anybody showing any signs of, of illness, then a different level kicks in. And, and yes, that would become mandatory. But, um, you know, just in general movements, there is no requirement to wear face masks on board. Um, there was a question about solo supplement. Um, yep. does, does that mean that they uh, get the room to themselves? Uh, yes, it does. Those, um, those solo cabins, um, whilst they're available, um, don't mean that you're forced to, uh, to share. Um, Jenny has asked us, what can we use the travel credit for? You can take yourself out to dinner. Like it, <laughs> you can do a, a whole range of things. It's, um, it's not, not really pre-subscribed. Pre the, um, you know, basically that is a, is a discount that comes off um, for guests um, sort of pre-travel. So it just won't be invoiced and they could use that for airfares. They could use that for, um, you know, something else. They could buy a new camera. There's, there's any range of, of, um, of activity that they could, uh, they could spend that, uh, that little windfall on. And Rachel's asked her about can she get her dive qualifications on board? Uh, so we don't we don't do dive qualifications because we don't offer um, that would mean that we'd have to take them through the program there'd be some learning involved um, but what they can do if they don't have any diving qualifications with that complimentary dive it's called a discover uh, discover scuba they'll get a certificate. And then that means that when um, they go and do a dive elsewhere, they can show that certificate and they won't have to do the introductory dive anymore. But as for a PADI or a SSI qualification for diving, like open water, uh, no, we don't on board. Right. And um, we've just actually had a quick um, questions from Rachel in just in regards to kids programs and family rooms. Um, in regards to children, so children, how do you handle children on board the ship, Marcia? Um, they're actually, they're much easier than the adults, I find. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> because they're just, they're so excited um, to be out there on the reef. And usually uh, if they're coming on the reef, they're super keen to get in the water. They're um, just basically in the water from start to finish. So it's really, really easy. Um, as for anything uh, special, we don't actually offer like uh, any kids programs, but we do um, take them under our wing. We'll take them on um, sometimes special uh, glass bottom boat tours. Uh, we'll also, if we've got some deck crew available, we'll chuck them onto the little inflatable zodiacs and whip them around the reef just for something fun. So we do we do go above and beyond for the little kiddies. Excellent. Yeah, so it's really about nature. You know, the kids being entertained in nature. We, we don't have the, um, you know, the, the, the kids' rooms and all of the, yeah. the entertainment, but uh, they, they seem very, very happy with the uh, yeah. play, playground. That's I mean, the in yeah. internet can't load any Netflix or anything like that, so it's good. <laughs> very good. Um, uh, there's a question there from Georgina about Kimberley. Um, do we have anything coming up soon? Um, so we kick off the Kimberley season um, from, I think we've got some early season, late March trips next year. Um, we'll have three vessels in the Kimberley next year. Um, obviously, like um, the rest of the world, just waiting to, um, to see borders open, but uh, you know, certainly um, our, our Kimberley season for 2021 is, um, is, is in a lot of demand and runs from late March all the way through until early October. So there's an extended season because we have, uh, yeah, we have, we've got accommodating all of, the, uh, all of the guests who are unfortunately affected by us not operating up there this year. And Jeff, I think this is the last question. Um, we've got one from Natasha saying, um, are excursion, all excursions included in the price or are they an additional cost? So um, yes, uh, excursions are included in the, um, on the Great Barrier Reef. They are all included. Um, so that's land and water based, except for where they mentioned the scuba diving. So if you are wanting to take um, um, additional diving or you want to do certified diving, et cetera, or your, or your full introduction dive, that would be at an additional cost. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Um, there was one other one tucked in there. Uh, was there? I missed. Yeah, I'm just uh, seeing. So, um, so Jenny has asked, so can you use the travel credit on board? Yes, that's one option for you. Um, 
or sorry, you'll, you'll have that, that, that the dollars will have come off pre, pre you won't be actually charged for that. So you won't have a, a credit sitting on board, but you can certainly use that money to, um, to cover onboard expenses, um, if, uh, if that's what you'd like to do. Um, okay. Spawning, somebody asked about whether, when is coral spawning? So um, there's, it's normally around the full moon, kicks off um, the full moon triggers that, and it's normally either in November or December. And in some years you can get um, it occurring over the two um, consecutive months. So the dates I think are around the, the week beginning the 6th of November, and also the week beginning the 4th of December uh, are likely to be the spawning periods this year. And I think that might be it. No, there were actually another one popped up. The, top, <laughs> the 18th of November. Awesome. <laughs> Where can I find the requirement for the underwater shooting? So, so which photography, with the photography departure on the 18th of November? Where oh, okay, yep. Yeah. So we do have more information about that one on our website. Okay. Um, Yes, you can absolutely view that there. Um, you can also view the Revitalise on the Reef and the Citizen Science um, on our website as well. Um, yeah. Science, and, all, so just, sorry? And, and feel free to give us a call. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We can yeah. reach out. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so Darren Dew, the underwater trip is with Darren Dew. Darren um, has shot in Queensland on the reef for decades and one of the best marine and underwater photographers uh, out there globally so um, and a really entertaining person to travel with as well so the beauty the beauty of, of having them out there is that you get to sit side by side for the entire seven days and really pick their brains and learn from their experience i think that that's a wrap for you i'll let you um finish up awesome. well thank you guys i um, really appreciate everyone tuning in and um jeff liz and marisha appreciate your time as well Thanks, guys. And if you do have any questions, um, feel free to submit those at any time. You can reach out to, um, to myself um, and then we'll share a copy of this webinar, as I mentioned, in our trade resources area as well. So thanks again.